Hey y'all, great job showing space in your still lifes last week. This week we will be working on shading our fruit or our apple. So I have this example of the sphere here for you. And I had to turn off the light so there wouldn't be a ton of different light sources on the ball or on the sphere. So I have the one light source coming from my computer right here. And notice right in the middle, you can see the outline of my computer. This would be the highlight because it follows the shape of the object or it follows the shape of the light source. Now right around the highlight is a little bit lighter area. This is a tint. So our brains, or in our brains, we know that this sphere is red. The whole thing is the same color red. But light tricks our brains into thinking that this is lighter and this is darker. So the darker part is called our shadow or our shade. And then even you have some reflected light. You can see from my hand it's just a tiny bit of reflected light, but you won't have to worry about that until next year. All right, so we are gonna, or I will be showing you in the rest of this video how to shade your sphere. One other thing I want you to notice real quick before we go is that if I turn the sphere, the light stays in the same spot as the shadows. It follows the light source. So if I were to bring in another light, you can see our highlight right on top where our tints are and notice our shadows are always going to be on the opposite side from our light source. And the highlights and shadows follow the shape of the sphere. All right, continue watching this video to figure out how to do your assignment. First, I'm going to show you how to shade any spherical shape like your apples. We will be using the paint roller tool. Make sure you're on the middle square. This is the middle amount of color. Then choose the same color as your object. Now that we know our light source is in the top left hand corner, we are going to draw a crescent shaped shadow on the opposite side of the sphere. You may have to do this twice before your shadow actually pops up. Then continue drawing crescent shaped shadows inside the larger one to create darker shades. When you are using the paint roller tool, the color builds automatically so you don't have to keep changing colors. Now we need to place our highlight. So I went back and chose the color white and I'm drawing a jelly bean shaped highlight on the same side as the light source. Now this is the fun part. You get to choose the smudge tool and blend out the different tints and highlights or shades and shadows so it seems more seamless. Don't go too crazy with it because if you do too much blending, all of the sphere will be the same color and you don't want that. We want to see the tints and the shades. Also be careful to keep your finger inside the sphere when you're smudging. If you go outside, you're gonna mess up that beautiful line that you have separating your sphere from the background. When you have two spheres together that overlap, the only difference is adding a shadow where the one in front casts a shadow on the one in the back. So for your assignment, you're going to go into Seesaw where I have provided a template for you. And you are going to practice shading the spheres on the first page and on the second page just like I did in this video. Remember, you can pause or replay any part of this video.